<laughs> uh, somebody's helping me out there on the server and I didn't know they were doing it so that was really good well done um, you were a bit quick for me there um, if you just want to stop that from playing uh, and just press the stop button that'll be really great right um, ladies and gentlemen our listeners boys and girls fairy folk seven foot aliens and their uh, interdimensional galactical beings cracking show for you tonight uh, I've got a guy with me badger uh, permafusion okay permafusion I've got, look, I, I'm learning. I've learned a bit about permaculture and stuff, and, and uh, earth ships, and, and but this kind of ta- permafusion ties all that together. It really does. And this isn't like a new idea, green thing. Come on, give us your cash. This is kind of stuff that really does work. Really does work. Long time and short and long term solution. So uh, we're a bit late. We're about eight minutes late in starting the show. That's all Dom's fault. I'm uh, blaming it all on Dom. I'm, <laughs> because I can. No, it isn't, of course. It's passion and it's live radio. These things are going to happen. So, without any further ado, um, Badger, would you like to introduce yourself, man? And just let it bubble out, if you like. Just let it bubble out. Well, hi, guys. Um, I've uh, got a, a document called Permafusion and uh, it is sort of my personal angle with the combination of permaculture, earthship structure, sculpture, basically rounding it all off in an artistic fashion uh, so that we can not only have workable systems, but they can be pleasurable and bring many different levels uh, of uh, support and joy and uh, connection, uh, hopefully to try and bond culture together and get a new direction in in our in our in our wishes for what world we want to give to the next generation and what world we want for ourselves uh, and um, I've been forming this for many years it's been quite a study uh, and right now it's a wonderful time because a lot of people are getting really familiar with permaculture and they're, 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 the earthship subject is all over the world uh, bar most of the first world that doesn't allow them to be built, but um, uh, they are placed all over the world, and um, they're very practical solutions. They're sort of solutions that uh, are low maintenance, they're very connected to the optimum human living environment. And that's where I'm sort of coming from, really. And I've been studying a little bit of uh, the aquaponics from, from you, Bob, as well today. I've been uh, uh, from you, Paul. I've been studying a little bit of that because uh, I thought I'd catch up uh, so that I could give uh, a little bit of a comparison between permaculture and aquaculture. You can also look at aeroponics, aquaponics, uh, and all the different systems together, uh, and they uh, they can all flow together. In fact, one of the great teachers in permaculture is Jeff Lawton, and in his Urban Permaculture DVD that he released, uh, a lot of it's based on the aquaculture, but uh, a natural form of aquaculture, trying to actually blend it into your garden or your earthworks, rather than it just being in tanks. Uh, and um, these are superb technologies. We, we really do have to start using them and getting high nutrition food so we can think clearly, communicate well, uh, and be happy. Uh, create, create a nicer environment that we're not so stressed. And we're not so pressured by the main that's uh, driving us driving us a bit insane at the moment. At so, all. Um, at all, uh, yeah. you have the uh, aquaponics knowledge. Uh, and uh, what do you think after looking at the permaculture a bit more? I think they're both required, uh, to be honest. Um, like I say, I have not studied depth into permaculture. My, my comprehension of permaculture comes from forestry. Um, I've done. I've done. I've, I've worked a little bit. I lived in forestry many years ago. Yeah, so that that's kind of where I come from. It. I can. I can see it. I'd like to be able to incorporate modern day ideology with nature. Uh, I think we've made massive leaps in in, in loads of fields. I know we'd be quite a bit behind. You know, just going off what Dom said on the last show. You know, <laughs> we are a bit messed up you know you know and as you said yourself Padre, you know we're not in a great great position but we have made some amazing leap forward and if we can use those if we can bring the good bits together 
So, and I find that, I, well, I find it by by looking for the bad bit. Find the bad bit and see if you can turn it into a good bit. If you, and it sounds yeah. dead simple and childish, but that's who we designed the aquaponics Bob's Backyard uh, originally, which is hydroponics number four life dot co dot uk uh, and also it's the same name on youtube hydroponics number four wife uh, was was devised around children um, to teach children I, I, i've done a little bit of research nice. and had a little bit of experience in the field and, and i found that that younger minds were far more Open, divergent. O- o- open. Um, well, divergent thinking, yeah. Uh, I didn't want to have a go at the parents too much. Um, <laughs> the, the, the children were far more open to realising that food is actually free. Now, when I'm trying to explain this to adults, food is free. It's free. It doesn't cost any money. It's free. You're actually paying for the transport. You're paying for the, the, the man hours. You're paying for labour charges and storage. Uh, and so forth. That's the bulk of the price, right. you know. It, it, yeah, I mean, how, how, how far how far do your carrots travel before they get to you, and then what condition do they get to you, and what goodness is left in them, and how they were grown, and how much nutrition is in them because of the soil they were grown in, what quality the soil had is is very determinant on on the quality of the produce. And today, in today's market, you buy a tomato and it's got less than 50% of the values of tomatoes that were 50 years ago. And um, we're we're sort of looking at an area where we're degrading our nutrition, uh, we're degrading our environment, and uh, these solutions sort of bring that around. They they, they do turn it around. They, they, They give it 180 degrees where you are looking at uh, what nature does rather than you know sort of man's idea of nature and so it's a whole new perspective uh, and I, I love permaculture because I mean the word itself is a, is a combination of permanent and culture uh, and uh, it's combining nature with our optimum lifestyle and our optimum environment and our environment isn't bricks and cement and mortar you know it it's we miss the greenery and the trees uh, and uh, um, the problem with forestry as you mentioned forestry is still they seem to be a, a you know the the authoritative look uh, at, at nature and how it can work for us is very narrow-minded uh, and very hard to, uh, to 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 force any evolution in that area Uh, I seem to find that uh, there's a little project in my town where there's a a little forest on the hill and it's gone into disrepair because the storms have come and the trees they've planted are pine trees and pine trees have shallow roots so the storm comes and it can easily take out these trees Uh, so they're badly placed but because the Victorians or whoever planted them uh, many years ago uh, planted them, uh, the current council only can think of planting exactly the same thing and in fact are thinking of creating a pine cash crop in that area. Well, there's lots of problems uh, when you're doing that sort of thing. Uh, and um, if we have got a forest area, wouldn't it be a good idea if you're walking through that forest and you're stepping on mint and you're brushing up against a bailiff tree or you're, you're picking fruit as you go and you're filling your basket uh, um, foraging on an extreme scale uh, and the forest is actually producing itself it needs an absolutely minimum 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 uh, man interference or man uh, effect after you've got the design system in place so I work I my plant knowledge is not great I'm not a great plant man I, I work on the design systems that create an environment for nature to do its work, uh, and um, it, it's it's sort of lazy gardening. It's 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 lazy gardening, lazy forestry, if you like, because you understand nature. Uh, and uh, I was chatting to uh, somebody who was working on this little forest, and uh, they were saying that they were having a problem uh, because they were making clearances uh, of the land, uh, and when they were making these clearances of the land, they were saying that it was 
raising their, their, the maintenance levels uh, and the amount of volunteers that were necessary to keep it all under control or to keep it all. And that's the problem. We, we, we sort of need, need to control. We, we seem to have a need to control things, or at least our authorities do. Uh, and um, we, we need to allow rather than to control uh, and, um, and guide and combine. Uh, and that's the wonderful thing about a forest system. It's the most productive system known to man. There's nothing more productive on this planet. Um, the whole of this country was covered in forest and now it's quite hard to find a forest. And the forest that we do have, there's no old forest left. And when I, when I mention forests, uh, there, there, there are different types. Uh, so you've got an old forest, uh, which basically disappeared out of the whole of Europe. The only place you're going to find old forests in the Western world is in North America, where there's still a couple of places where the old forest still exists and you get your thousand year old celebrative uh, combination of the three species of three species of mushroom, which takes a thousand years when they combine and they create uh, um, a beautiful um, thousand year old mushroom uh, we've only got two or three of these left in the western world uh, and um, we are only just learning now the true benefits uh, that a forest can give us but permaculture sort of works on the fringes because an old forest in the centre uh, hasn't really got what we need uh, but it does look after the planet uh, so the fringes, which are actually the much more productive area where you'd find more your berries and your herbs and your um, sort of more human uh, type of food, uh, is the most productive area. And permaculture sort of taking that design where, where the most productive thing in looking and studying um, as permaculture is based on observation rather than lots of work, you do 90% observation and 10% work in permaculture, where uh, in normal agriculture you do 90% work and 10% observation. And um, it's the combination of species, it's, it's the most productive area. So um, that's sort of how I can, can explain it. But the wonderful thing is that people have been using these systems and adapting these systems all over the world in all different types of environments, right up to the top of mountains, uh, to Jordan where there's only 10 centimeters of rain a year and um, uh, they've become extremely successful very much against the normal thought for what I call angry forestry uh, and um, it, it is turning a lot of the current understandings on its head but being super productive so uh, I hope that um, people start to look at these these masters of the art uh, and there are many of them and you can have permaculture systems from a window box uh, or cover the whole world so size is not important it's more uh, how you look at designing the system to be beneficial for you to be beneficial for wildlife to be beneficial for the animals uh, and um, to work with plants that work together as families as well. You start to understand in permaculture that there are families. So a very simple one would be tomatoes and basil, which grow together and the basil protects the tomato. Uh, and you end up with two crops uh, instead of just planting your tomatoes. Uh, and you end up with a lot of uh, uh, combinations like this within permaculture that are gleaned from nature. Uh, and nature is the finest teacher we've got. Whereas if you look at some of the more man-made systems, uh, there are elements removed from nature. If you look at our agriculture, uh, the government would supply to a farm three types of nutrients, your N, P and K, uh, and, uh, and that's the limit really. Whereas actually the, the soil nutrients that it needs, the elements that it needs, uh, there's about 50 plus, 50 plus elements in the soil needed to grow good food. And uh, this nutrition level, and even an understanding of what nutrition we need, we've been removed from. Our understanding uh, of how we can 
um, give ourselves and what we need in our culture. Stress, for instance, in our culture is often caused by dehydration or not having enough nutrition, not actually the situation you think you are in. Uh, and um, the beautiful thing about a forest uh, system is it's not like an agricultural system which doesn't um, give you color uh, and you can't walk around it and you can't uh, interact with it. Whereas a permaculture system, as a forest system, being productive, uh, you're encouraged to walk around, to get involved, to walk in there uh, and to, to feel the beauty uh, at the same time, which is its levels we don't consciously really, you know, sort of look at at the moment. So permaculture uh, is one of the angles that I'm working from uh, and I learned from uh, teachers, mainly from Bill Mollison, who coined the phrase of permaculture, uh, and he's the person who's really brought it to the world, planting millions of trees uh, all over the planet, uh, and studying systems constantly, and he's got a wonderful comment, because uh, as probably the most knowledgeable, or one of the most knowledgeable people in this area, uh, he admits that as you get into it, you end up opening up more Pandora's boxes and you end up opening up more areas, more connections uh, and uh, he finds himself uh, explaining to people that the further you get the less you know in a way and you work a lot more off your instri instincts uh, the deeper you get into these subjects but uh, productivity is higher than standard agriculture uh, that's a very arguable point there's a lot of people that argue uh, that it isn't, um, but uh, even if it wasn't, uh, the nutrition level of the actual food that's produced from it and, and the lack of necessity for human intervention and care, I mean, it's inarguable. It's, it's the most sensible, common sense thing to do on the planet. Uh, and we need to reforest. If you go up in a balloon across any of the Western countries, you'll find uh, fields for miles uh, and no forest land or very, very little forest land. These fields um, have no human interaction uh, apart from the farmer who owns the field. And with rather strange rules, often coming from Europe, we're uh, forced often not to grow any food on these fields as well. It's absolute insanity. So we've got a lot of land that we could use. Uh, we've got no shortage of land. We've got to allow or to try and encourage uh, the, the current controlling factors of the land and the, the farmers, the uh, agricultural industry, the horticultural industry, uh, to be able to, to open their eyes a little bit more, to sort of, uh, especially the agriculture industry, uh, they've really got to come out the box. Because also with permaculture, you see, you don't need any large heavy machinery. So th this is not going to help your uh, John Deere or your, 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 your big manufacturers. But we seem to have, have, have you know, pushed uh, that area as far as we can. Uh, and um, it's costing us a fortune. Farmers are going broke at the moment uh, throughout the world uh, and they're looking for more land. And um, Toby Hemingway points that out. He's a, a, a great student of permaculture. And he points out that when we started agriculture 10,000 years ago, it was also coincidentally or non-coincidentally as a result of, uh, we also had things like uh, repetitive strain injury when we started in our processes because we, we started a factory process of actually bringing uh, the uh, food to our table uh, and, um, and we ended up with a big population boost um, but the population ended up with a lot more illness and a lot more problems so uh, the solution from one angle uh, is not enough you have to look very holistically if you like at it uh, at the whole subject you get uh, a step back in your perspectives and when you do you start to realize that um, we, we have these solutions to be able to turn this around and we have to start creating these systems whether they be small or large 
and creating wonderful examples for people to see. You've got uh, very divergent or very diverse uh, versions of permaculture. Uh, Bill Mollison wasn't the first to walk in this area. Uh, Masanobu Fukuoka, uh, which is a, a name of a, a wonderful Japanese uh, man who created permaculture systems before it was called permaculture. He has rice fields that don't need to be flooded with water. You don't need to transplant the um, seedlings. And um, he has two crops a year, runs barley off the, on the off season and uh, has clover as ground cover underneath and then seeds the rice. Uh, and uh, his yield is, is equal to or above uh, most of the traditional techniques. But there's a lot less disease because there's less disease carried because you're not introducing water, water to the system. And Masanobu Fukuoka is also responsible for, for doing the same sort of technique to orchards. I mean, if you look at an orchard in England, and anybody goes to plant an orchard in England, they, they generally get their spacing, they cut the grass, <coughs> excuse me, they cut the grass constantly around the trees, they deny any of the relationship species from forming around the base of the tree, uh, which they would naturally. Uh, and um, and we have a very we have to do everything in rows. We have to have everything sort of organised. It's like looking at those uh, council organised gardens in your in a town where they've got sometimes very bright flowers. I mean, I'm in the southwest. I'm in, on the seaside in Torquay, and uh, we have a lot of these Victorian gardens, and they're actually bred so that they do not attract insects. And we've, we've, we've really got to watch this. It's, it's, it's the same with the trees in our country. We are, we are breeding what they would call, as a headline, insect or disease resilient species like the plains trees. But um, we're messing around with the gene pool. And uh, architects, really, they're, when, when, when they're working with trees, they're looking at resilient trees that can handle human street lights, that can handle the pollution of our cars, that can handle our uh, very destructive way of life, if you like. Um, but um, there are much better ways to go about this. We, we, we really do have to look at this for our benefit for the future uh, and to be able to give us a, a level of food security. So uh, in, in my town, as in many others, you've got a green belt. And if you chat to your council, they're always looking for options of what to do with the green belt. And the green belt could easily be developed into a beautiful fruit forest where people could visit on the weekends or visit after work and pick up their, uh, have, a, have a wonderful experience of walking through this colorful, full of, filling all your senses of color and, and sight and smell and taste and uh, and texture uh, uh, and these are the sort of things that we need it's it's the environment that we miss and we wonder why we have so much stress and problems in our community but we don't have these areas uh, I lived in Spain for 10 years and they have uh, what they call huertos uh, h-u-e-r-t-o I think it's spelled uh, and um, huertos are like allotments uh, but they were first developed by the Moroccans many, many years ago, who built these channels in earth uh, to be able to feed their land and to be able to feed their, their plants. Uh, and um, these channels were made out of earth deliberately and intentionally. Uh, and what would happen is as the water ran along, it wouldn't only run along the channels that they made to run to each area of their land, but it would also seep, therefore, into the land. And in the West, we used to use a similar system. It's called swales. Uh, and these systems, therefore, are creating a water level where the plants underneath the ground, where, where the plants really uh, start to benefit from. And it's not just the flooding, but when the Spanish, in the modern term, have come in uh, and imposed uh, human modern technology and thought, uh, they've actually concreted all the channels. So no longer does the water seep into the underground water level and uh, the land has become dry, the land has become barren, uh, the food they grow on it is not putting nutrients back into the soil, which 
companion plants would do. So you've got clover, for instance, which is a nitrogen fixer, uh, and many plants that, that start to work, in, in, depending on the system you, you're looking at. But they, they feed the soil. Uh, and uh, all our farming, we just reap. We just, we, we, we rape the land. We, 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 we take the land away. Uh, so, um, yeah, we, 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 tend to, we tend to be more destructive than helpful and then wonder why we're short of water. We have poor nutrition food. We have a lot of disease. We have a lot of uh, viruses and insects and uh, attacks. Uh, and really, it's, it's, it's completely blatant. It's completely obvious. So my teachers, basically, as I've mentioned a couple there, uh, I'll run off a list so that you can look them up yourselves uh, up onto YouTube. Uh, there are many videos on YouTube, uh, many different techniques, and uh, it's always evolving, and people are coming up with uh, uh, new understandings constantly and new ways of, of water harvesting or working. But my teachers um, uh, are... Uh, Jeff Lawton, which is uh, one of the first students from Bill Mollison, Mollinson, I should say, and uh, Masanobu Fukuoka, uh, who has not only created uh, the orchard and rice system, but also uh, seed balls or seed bombs that many people are getting to know as well these days. And... Um, uh, and you've got these wonderful people. Uh, Sepp Holzer um, is also one of the most fantastic. He's got techniques that are blowing the world away. He's 1,300 meters up in the Alps, has 160 days a year of frost. Uh, and uh, his land, on being on a slope, uh, ranges, it has a range of 400 meters. Um, and normally, of course, these lands are covered uh, government sponsored uh, uh, and covered with pine trees. And um, he uh, started to plant fruit trees and um, uh, has a carp farm, uh, a fish farm. Uh, so he does a, uh, one of the most amazing uh, combination techniques on the planet. Uh, the farm he's got is called the Kranaterhof in Austria. And um, He's created uh, a system where he's got uh, uh, many different types of fruit trees. He's got citrus uh, and the government and the, uh, the specialists, if you like, uh, have always told him it's impossible. You'll never make it happen. It will never grow. It will never work. But he's demonstrated it's taken him 30 years to create uh, this absolutely amazing example. He's now passed it to his son, Joseph. And um, it's fantastic inspiration. So when I meet people that are in cold climates, uh, north of Scotland or uh, in, in mountainous areas. He's one of the most fantastic examples, but his techniques can be used in lower uh, areas as well. Uh, and he has a, a fantastic technique. He's got, um, for, for, for all areas, it's called Hoodle culture. And what he does is copy a forest system, uh, but accelerate the process. So as a tree dies and leaves an opening in a forest, it normally falls on the floor, rots down and creates a fungal. Uh, it's, it's broken up by the fungi uh, and becomes soil and therefore feeds and creates another soil level if it is left alone. In our forestry, we tend to remove all the trees uh, that fall down uh, and stop and, and, and hinder that process. But what he does to accelerate the process is he'll get a log and he'll stick it on the ground uh, and then uh, usually on the contour of the land, uh, following the contour of the land to be able to trap a little bit more water. And then he covers the log with mulch and then overlays that mulch with a mound of earth. And then on that mound of earth, uh, place rocks, which are used as solar panels uh, to trap the heat and to... Uh, bring uh, a little different microclimate to the system. And this, um, this sort of system encourages uh, the animals, encourages uh, moles. We, you know, we like moles in permaculture. Uh, and uh, uh, we like 
uh, the um, insects, uh, and we like this combination. So this is a, this is creating this sort of environment. But it's a, it's a fast track. So when he's covered it uh, uh, with the soil and put the rocks on, the planting, therefore, because you can do many of these in a row on contour, uh, and that's what Sepp also often does, uh, is um, basically in the channels in between the mounds, if you're doing rows, you would plant trees and deep-rooted um, plants that would pick up the nutrients that wash off the top of the mounds. Uh, so they'd be down in the, in the, in the valleys, in the, in, the, in the guts of it, if you like. Uh, then you're planting uh, herbs on the side or, or um, um, herbaceous type plants. And then on the top, you're creating, you're planting, sorry, uh, the root vegetables. Um, uh, and uh, the combination is incredible. Sepp Holzer also has farmers that work for him, but they're not human. Uh, and uh, a lot in permaculture is based on that, that interrelationship between species that would benefit the area uh, and whatever human intervention uh, is necessary, but, but usually on a minimal basis. But animals basically are his farmers. That's what he does. And of course, he's up in the Alps, so he has to get, uh, I think he's got um, some Slovakian pigs, which can handle those harsh conditions up in, in the mountain. And there's crossbred uh, Highland cattle, Scottish Highland cattle, uh, with pygmy cattle, so they don't, so they can handle the slopes and they don't start breaking up the ground. Uh, this is this is a, a wonderful advancement, and and there 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 are wonderful examples. He's so successful now that it's one of the most popular places for people to visit studying permaculture to go on a course and to go and study uh, the. Permaculture in England uh, uh, could learn so many lessons uh, uh, from, from, from these teachers uh, and advance our systems tremendously. Uh, and we, we really do need to start actually planting these. I mean, I start gardens and I'll put gardens in, a, in, in, a, in, in, in extremely small areas. I, I've just done a, a little garden uh, last, uh, last summer for a friend of mine and he's got a garden which is only three meters by two meters 65 but i've managed to fit a pond uh, essential for the humidity uh, and, and um, i lifted the whole garden laid down logs underneath uh, and uh, put the soil back on top and then it's a choice uh, of what type of garden what type of produce you'd like to have really so you can do it in very small areas but um You've got uh, uh, an enormous amount of knowledge, an enormous amount of experience, uh, because now, uh, 30 years on from when many people realized that this was possible, you can see existing systems all over the world, and you can visit these existing systems. Near to me is Martin Crawford, one of the greatest English permaculturists, uh, and he's in Dartington, where there is a 15-year-old fruit forest. And it's a wonder to walk in. Uh, it's an absolute wonder. You, 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 you just feel alive. You feel vibrant. Just walking through this area, it, it connects with you on a level that we can't really explain. And um, it's the natural environment. It's our optimum environment. And, um, and we can combine it and we can work it. So in permaculture, uh, you have an understanding of what the forest is. Uh, and the forest has somewhere between 10, well, seven and 10 levels. Uh, and by levels, I, I sort of mean the, the, the type of plants that you'd put in there. So you can uh, suggest these levels as being uh, the root vegetables, the ground cover vegetables, uh, which is, your, like I mentioned, your clovers, strawberries, this type of thing. And um, uh, depending on where you are in the world, and I'll, uh, in, in England, for instance, we're in a temperate climate. We're very lucky because we can have two herbaceous levels as well. Uh, there are, uh, there's a bush level uh, uh, where you end up with a lot of berries and small fruits. And then you have your fruit trees, uh, your understory trees and your overstory trees. Uh, and the combination of the, oh, and your climbers, sorry. 
Uh, and the combination of these is, uh, is, is exactly how nature works. So when I started earlier on, I mentioned about this forest. And this guy goes up, clears the land. Uh, and whenever you clear land in England, what happens? You get it covered directly with brambles, uh, usually up to about a metre in height if you leave it alone. And um, you'd be very lucky to get anything more than a vole through the hole uh, that the brambles eventually make. And basically, it's an aggressive um, approach of nature to try and say, leave this soil alone. It needs to repair. But we don't understand that. We, we, we just think, oh, they're horrible. We've got to get rid of them. So our massive maintenance is going in and cutting these, these plants away. Whereas in permaculture, really, uh, if you understand what, the, what it's doing, it's trying to fix the soil and you put in place plants that fix the soil and you've already placed the chosen plants in that area, those invasive plants that uh, would normally be walking into that area don't have room to walk into that area. So Jeff Lawton, for instance, had a permaculture study school in Australia and uh, he moved on or the whole school moved on to another area and they left it for seven years. No human intervention whatsoever. And he's planted this entire area in an area that was previously grassland and the uh, car park of the farm was, uh, I forget the name of the farm off the top of my head, but um, uh, he planted the forest in this area and, um, uh, and of course grass is very aggressive and very intrusive uh, along with the other um, uh, aggressive common, what we call weeds. Uh, and um, he's planted that and he's left it for seven years on the border uh, where the grassy car park was, the grass is still there, the forest is there, and there's a direct straight line on the border of the forest, even after seven years, and there has been absolutely no invasive plants have been able to penetrate into that area. And it's a wonderful, wonderful example. So we worry about things like columbine. My neighbor's got a lot of columbine here. So I planted in the garden and I've overplanted. You sort of overplant, you overstack. But with the type of plants you want and with the balance, as I say, to understand uh, the, 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 the varieties you need in nature. And, um, uh, and even in one season, um, it has prevented. Um, there's still a little of the columbine that will come through, uh, but it's weak and it's, it's more vulnerable and it's not flourishing. So uh, as you go on and you continue seeding, as long as you collect the seeds from the previous season, uh, which I ha actually haven't done uh, for this last season, uh, the, I'll have to reseed. Uh, but uh, as you reseed, um, you uh, maintain that level. And eventually you create a system that's looking after itself. It takes quite a while for the soil to actually get into uh, you know, a really good condition. And that's what weeds normally do. So um, if you've got a piece of land and you put a, uh, have a fire uh, on that land and you leave it, you abandon it, and then you come back to that piece of land and the weeds have grown up in the surrounding area and you look at where you've had your fire and you'll have weeds that are correcting and fixing because that's their job. Weeds are only plants we don't quite understand and weeds are actually doing a job. Uh, and they've got a job to do. Uh, and because of our our limit in our understanding of this, we've treated it as, oh, we don't like those plants. They're not beneficial for us and they're not, <laughs> they're not what we desire. So we just use chemicals uh, and um, uh, aggressively uh, with a lot of energy and having to buy strimmers and having to buy high tools and, and, and equipment to cut cut these weeds back but that's all they are they're, they're workers they're trying to prepare the land for the forest to develop uh, and um, it's uh, it's a, it's an it's an understanding that that, that is so logical and, you know I, I hope as I'm explaining this it, it's it's a really uh, a really simple uh, a really common sense uh, way of, of, of looking at our uh, at how nature works and I, you don't have to have um, uh, great knowledge. You don't have to, you know, go on these courses. 
uh, they can benefit, and it is always better to to to, to extend your, your knowledge on there. But it's basically based on observing. Uh, and with ba these basic understandings, you can go and look at a new area tomorrow. Go and visit uh, the nearest forest to you tomorrow and go and have a look around and go and check it out and go and feel what the smell, uh, you know, OK, it's not a fruit forest, not a permaculture forest. More than likely, you're going to visit in your own area at this moment. But um, uh, you're going to be able to feel that the air is fresher. Uh, you're going to feel uh, vibrant. You're going to feel alive. You're going to feel you know, the, this is an environment we feel comfortable with. And we're not always comfortable in a deep, deep forest, but we are, uh, you know, we spend very little time in that area. Uh, and uh, But we are comfortable on the fringes and we are comfortable with walking into the forest to get a valuable fungi uh, or uh, something else we need. So um, we combine everything in permaculture, uh, water harvesting, uh, the understanding of the forest system, and uh, fungi, and fungi is is uh, also um, in that hugel culture technique with set holzer holzer, something that is encouraged with the breakdown of the wood and the logs underneath. Fungi is essential. You need fungi in your garden. You need to create a mycelium net underneath your garden. If you if you can create that, um, fungi does most of your gardening work for you. And when a tree or uh, a group of plants is short of nutrients um, or even water the mycelium net will transfer it for you uh, and it is one of your great workers i mean you can you can set it off automatically so permaculture is something we 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 need to look at for our own benefit and at the moment we're we're causing so such mass destruction on the land with our angry culture techniques uh, and our forestry techniques uh, and we're causing um, uh, ourselves a hell of a lot more work and a hell of a lot more problems. And therefore, we have to create these uh, machines to deal with it because it, it becomes too difficult to deal with with a simple machete. Um, that forest uh, that, uh, set hot, uh, that uh, Jeff Lawson built in Australia, he left it for seven years. He went back it, with one man and a machete you could maintain and bring that forest back into maintenance and also accelerate the produce that you would like to encourage. So you can cut away some, some plants. You're always planting uh, a combination of um, trees that are not always productive trees. You plant a lot of uh, uh, legumous trees, which are nitrogen fixers and these or legumous plants. And nitrogen fixers are essential in a forest. So we're not looking to get a direct product for them. They are the type of species that um, create the right elements in the soil and encourage other relationship plants to move in as well. And uh, the wonderful thing about leguminous trees is you can go in there and if you want to accelerate the forest, you literally just um, crop them uh, and you crop them back and you, and you drop them where you crop. You drop them on the floor everywhere and it creates, um, yeah, I, I don't know whether you've seen uh, any of the permaculture techniques, but people often use mulch or straw to protect the soil from the sun because soil is like your skin. It doesn't, you know, uh, it, it, it needs cover. It needs protection. And uh, I often wonder because we seem so unsuited to the world in our modern environment, we need to clothe ourselves. Uh, <laughs> we need we need sunglasses to go out in the sun. We need, you know, we, 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 we seem to need technology just to be able to go everywhere. But nature is the same. Uh, and if you strip it, uh, um, you know, it, 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 as I say, it tries to recover. It tries to recover itself. So I mentioned to this uh, forest guy, I said, if I, uh, if I took all your clothes and I shaved off all your hair, what would you do? And of course, you try and put your, your clothes and your, uh, or try and grab some clothes or some cover as soon as possible to cover yourself and not be so exposed. And as you went and do that, if I was there again and I saw you doing that and I came up and ripped off your clothes again and 
it took a lot of work. It takes a lot of work and shaved all your hair again uh, uh, and kept you back. Then uh, you can see that nature works the same way. The forest is the same way. It's only trying to protect itself. It's only trying to cover itself again. Uh, and um, you, we, in our culture, we have got rid of most of the productive plants. So we only have quite aggressive weeds left. Uh, in the local parks, I'm trying to encourage a park project in a, in a local town, and they've cut away all the bushes. I don't know whether it's because of fear of uh, antisocial behavior or paedophilia or whatever they, they've got in a headline or, or, or are worried from, or some politician wants to make some political points on. Uh, but um, I've been out of my town for a long time, and I haven't been bored slowly, and I've come back, and I can't believe what we're doing. Uh, and... Um, People get so disillusioned, they don't even have any interest in those areas anymore. So most of the green areas end up having a supermarket on them these days. Uh, and that's exactly what's going on in my town. And I imagine it's going on all over the country. So it's an understanding. It's, an, it's a simple understanding. Uh, and um, mulch and straw is doing the same thing that those aggressive weeds are doing. They're trying to cover the soil to protect the soil, to stop the humidity from rising, from leaving the soil, to protect it from the sun, and to create uh, an environment which uh, has the right bacteria, um, the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial... Everything is working to help each other. It's, a, it's an ecosystem. Uh, in fact, there's a... There's a, a just as a side point, a, a slight tangent, there's a, a wonderful video you can look up called The Money Fix. And towards the end, there's a permaculturist explaining how we could use this system in a, a beneficial system for our economy. And it's very interesting. So I, I would uh, suggest uh, to anybody, uh, take a good look at that one, The Money Fix. It's rather fantastic. You've even got the, uh, the architect of the euro um, saying some rather worrying things about our monetary system uh quite fantastic so uh yes permaculture is fantastic and it's one of the greatest subjects uh, uh, uh that has given me such inspiration in my life uh, uh and um i try and promote it everywhere uh, uh and um slowly we're beginning to establish these systems in our environment but the slowest place for all these things is in the west it's in the developed countries this is the slowest place to develop all this so you've got the, uh, the third world and the developed com countries embracing these techniques, using these techniques. Um, as I said, combine it with earth ships. They're, grow they're building earth ships and they have very few limitations. In fact, uh, the architects and the authorities are usually very, very open uh, to new ideas, and new techniques. Whereas in the first world, You've got all your regulations, all your what if, what if this happens, what if health and safety uh, conditions. You've got to love them. Uh, uh, and um, we are we are preventing this development. And I, I have seen and, and experienced myself that a, a lot of this prevention is based on uh, personal monetary gain. Uh, a lot of large corporations that have uh, deep links within our, our government, both in, in building materials and in agriculture and, of, of course, all these big industries. Because if you use permaculture systems instead of agriculture, you'd need to create no false, no, uh, um, no fertilizer, none of these sort of uh, chemically based fertilizers. Uh, and actually, it's such a big thing on the stock market, you'd probably crush the stock market um, by uh, not needing that product anymore. And of course, we wouldn't need tractors. A farm of the future or a farm fit for the future is often labeled. Uh, you'll find it on Google Video uh, is a very interesting one. And it's close to home for me because it's based on a farm in Devon who realized that the farm isn't working anymore. And uh, they introduced a... Um, permaculture system uh, or studied permaculture systems, this woman who's, who's, who's taking over the farm. Uh, and it's rather wonderful because she's had, had to go around and, and investigate other small systems in the area and get advice from permaculturists. 
And um, it's a wonderful video uh, as an introduction to permaculture. If you want to understand the basics of permaculture, there's the part in it which is talking about our peak oil, uh, and that's um, that's debatable. Um, but uh, to concentrate on actually the permaculture side of that video is fantastic. It's a great introduction to permaculture if anybody really uh, wants to start to learn more or introduce themselves to this subject. But where I see permaculture, I see permaculture combining very well with earth shifts. And I see permaculture combining very, very well, uh, um, well, I see earth shifts combining very well in our cold climate um, with rocket stoves. And I see all of this working very well if we can look at this artistically and make them all beautiful. Uh, and that's, that's what I try and promote at the moment. The Earthship is developed by Michael Reynolds, and he's been building communities uh, in New Mexico in America. Uh, now, uh, The Garbage Warrior is the video that's out on YouTube. Uh, and The Garbage Warrior is one of the, uh, well, it's been out since 2007, but it's now been released openly, uh, and people can watch the whole video rather than small clips of Earthship development around the world. But um, an airship's built out of uh, a, a tire building. Uh, and any time I mention this to anybody, they come back to me because everybody watches TV uh, and uh, mention the Grand Designs. Well, the Grand Designs building is a tire build. It's not an airship. Uh, and uh, I've built tire built structures. I haven't even built myself yet uh, a full airship system. The difference being uh, that they both use tire build. But an earth ship, and the reason why it's called an earth ship, I know it's a strange name and people often uh, um, uh, don't understand uh, the meaning of the combination of the words. But an earth ship is uh, called such, one, because it's made out of earth uh, and uses earth in the ram tires, which are used as bricks for the wall. Uh, another, um, because earth is often used on the roof, so you can have a living roof. Uh, and uh, the living roof obviously can have a permaculture system on it and around it, uh, and can even filter the water for you, so you end up with wonderful water. But uh, um, and, uh, and it grounds you. You feel grounded. You feel comfortable. The walls are so thick they don't. You're talking about uh, 60 centimeter minimally uh, with the tires rammed uh, before you put the fascia cappers on both sides which can be anything. You can cover them with stone. You can cover them with, with various materials. And, um, and the airship uh, walls uh, don't even let electrical magnetic waves through. So um, there's a lot of uh, problems with some people thinking that there'll be seepage from the tires and damage into the soil, but actually it's extremely minimal. Uh, it's extremely minimal. Uh, and you can go against this, but uh, the uh, the strength of the walls and the need to use these waste materials uh, in 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 uh, in our modern world. If I could build houses out of nappies, it would be a fantastic thing. Uh, using our waste uh, is a, is a wonderful angle. But an airship is an airship because it's it's a whole environment in itself. So combining with permaculture is perfect because when that water is collected in an airship, it is first used for your taps and your washing, obviously filtered. Uh, and then uh, your grey water is run through a plant system that is placed at the front windows of the building. And then after that, going through the plant system, it's then transported to your toilet. So uh, you're using uh, plant filtered water again. Uh, in your toilet systems and then runs into uh, what Michael Reynolds has developed as the uh, solar toilet he uses, but there are reed bed systems that run off from that as well. The solar toilet is basically a window letting sun in to break down the bacteria as it goes in through a septic tank system and then on into a reed bed. These are wonderful systems. Um, now, I mentioned the planting at the windows. And those windows are uh, in the northern hemisphere uh, face uh, the sun uh, to the south, uh, uh, and um, and they are the most important factor in an airship. Really, uh, your 
angle of the windows is super important. The size of the windows is super important. Uh, and the reason being is because the tire wall, uh, round tires uh, at the back of the building and around on the surroundings of the building are filled with soil. And they're ram solid, so you winch out the tyres. They're totally solid and rammed. It. So there's no option. You can't burn the tyres, by the way. Uh, so that's also a threat that has been mentioned that is irrelevant. Uh, but um, these uh, um, uh, windows are angled so that the winter sun can flow straight through to the back of the building and heat the thermal mass in the tyres. And therefore, it reverberates heat throughout the rest of the evening or the day. Uh, uh, and um, uh, the winter sun, therefore, is very effective in managing the temperature within an airship environment. On the summer sun, it's on a higher angle, obviously. And therefore, the lip of the window at the top is very important, depending on your position and your uh, need uh, to balance the temperature within the building. So it only hits... On the high point, it only comes through the windows and hits the planters um, that are at the front of the building. So you can plant quite amazing plants uh, in these structures because the heat and temperature is regulated throughout this building. Uh, uh, and where Michael Reynolds has been first building his buildings, uh, these structures, uh, was in New Mexico, which can hit minus 35 and plus 35 uh, different points of the year. But he's managed to maintain 17 to 22 degrees uh, perfect environment within these buildings uh, all year round without any exterior or other heating whatsoever. In the first buildings, he built a fireplace, but he found that he only used it as Christmas for effect and uh, actually doesn't actually need to use it for the rest of the year. It's fantastic. So your heating bills are not there. The latest development in airships, which I find fascinating, and I'm chatting to fabricators at the moment to see if we can develop these here in this country, and I've sent some, some mails to Michael Reynolds to see if he would uh, assist us in this uh, with the new technology, is they've developed what is called a dinosphere. Uh, and a dinosphere is a type of windmill. And if you study old farmers, it's very similar to what traditional farmers in, you know, uh, a couple of hundred years ago uh, were developing uh, on their land, uh, uh, windmill systems. And um, uh, this modern system is a vertical windmill. Uh, also, you'll find it on YouTube, a couple of clips, and it's well worth watching the CGI version and, uh, uh, and the other clips. Dinosphere is spelled. D-Y-N-A-S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. Uh, and um, the dinosphere is a vertical windmill. There's lots of arguments to the uh, electrical generation or what capacity of generation uh, compared to a vertical windmill or a horizontal windmill. And um, the vertical windmill usually collects much less energy. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's known for being a little bit more regular, uh, but much less energy. It's not a, a big burst of energy. Um, but it's, uh, as Michael Reynolds explains, a hare and a tortoise story. Uh, but he developed the idea, so um, there's an optimum. He spent a lot of time developing this system. Uh, and um, it, it creates the optimum energy uh, and is always constantly working. But the most important thing about a vertical windmill is its maintenance. It needs almost no maintenance whatsoever. So uh, it can be running for 20 years with no maintenance, uh, whereas a standard windmill, even these enormous things that our electrical companies and our government are investing in, in what we call green technology, which is often called green because it's too yellow to call it red, as uh, Lord Moncton would uh, would explain. Uh, they are creating these great big systems, but if you go to any wind farm, you'll see half of them not working. The maintenance and the downtime is absolutely uh, so detrimental uh, that it, it really is a limited technology at the moment. But Michael Reynolds has designed and, and advanced the vertical windmill system. It's reliable, and B. Michael Reynolds, his drive system at the bottom of the dynosphere is a pneumatic tire which drives the dynamos. Rather wonderful, just absolutely wonderful. And it's a brand new technology, so 
Uh, it hasn't uh, really been developed yet uh, or is just about to come onto the market uh, and he's encouraging it like he has the, uh, the Earthship project. All of these things, all of these things are against our current building laws. Uh, uh, in fact, there's actually no provisions for an Earthship yet. Uh, and um, when we look at the UK, uh, because many of these have been built in America so far and around the world, when we look at the UK, we've only got two official Earthships here. Uh, one in Brighton, uh, which is classed as an experimental building, often used as a classroom to teach people Earthship techniques. Uh, and it's a wonderful example if ever you're around Brighton, go and have a look at. Uh, and uh, another one in Fife. Uh, that the community used lottery money and gathered together and decided that they wanted to build an earthship structure and they built it in a very Scottish style uh, which is built into a bank with a stone fascia. It doesn't even resemble uh, the same type of structures that Michael Reynolds is building. But Michael Reynolds has had a problem uh, with the authorities obviously trying to get these uh, technologies out to people and the importance uh, of creating uh, a building that has nothing coming in and nothing coming out as far as energy, doesn't need any of the uh, civil engineering and services that we uh, tie ourselves to and, 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 and wrap ourselves in. Uh, and um, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, um, so, oh, no, sorry, he's had, he's had real problems. Uh, so to actually be able to sell the plans for the airship uh, to people he has had to build what he calls the global model. And the global model is a standard Earthship model, the most basic standard Earthship model. Uh, and he is allowed, um, uh, yeah, it's amazing, you've got to uh, be allowed to do this and not allowed to do that. I mean, uh, that's a different subject, but uh, yeah. Uh, try and prove there's somebody else between you and God or the ether, and uh, we'll see where authority lies. But that's more uh, commonly known as Dobbs, as, as Dom's realm. Uh, and um, uh, he's allowed to put this one out, so he's spread the plans for the global model. But actually, he's encouraging people to advance the designs themselves. He's encouraging people to look for custom designs, and he's uh, and they're fantastic. Um, you can Google in Google Images, and you'll come up with a multitude of designs and patterns. Uh, and um, um, by the way, for some of the videos, if you want to check on these, uh, I have a YouTube channel called the Uncle Grinder. That's my carving uh, label. Uh, Uncle Grinder uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, there are sections on permaculture, there are sections on Earthship, uh, and uh, uh, other subjects too. Uh, and uh, you can check out what is available out there on the net and, and follow the links. Uh, but um, the other part uh, that I mentioned earlier was rocket stoves. Uh, and rocket stoves can be of two basic versions. They have uh, metal made, uh, which uh, um, are often portable. Uh, and I'm uh, uh, developing one of those at the moment with a friend. Uh, and um, should, should have it working by Saturday. Uh, and um, the first one in the country with the glass front. We're trying to push the limits again here. Um, and my favourite part of the rocket stove is what they call a thermal mass rocket stove. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to easily explain this over the radio without a diagram. Uh, but um, if you look at permies.com, which is Paul Wheaton, uh, permies.com is one of the largest forums for this type of technology, uh, and it's based in America. And um, there's a wonderful, wonderful couple of pages uh, and links for rocket stoves. And I would encourage you to look at the thermal mass rocket stoves, which are built as a rocket stove, which is a, a highly efficient system that burns sticks rather than logs. So you can use coppicing that you can grow. And that's what we used to do in our environment. That's why you've got the cops here and the cops there uh, uh, around your, your, your towns and villages. Uh, and it may only be called the cops now because they've cut all the cops away. Uh, but um, uh, it's very renewable. You can grow and rotate your own uh, material to burn uh, in these systems. And when they burn, uh, because there are top loading um, uh, systems uh, which burn sideways with the draft, 
and there are front loading that burn vertical uh, systems in rocket stoves. They turn the wood into gas. They burn at a high, uh, somewhere between eight and nine, eight to nine times more efficient than standard wood stoves. Um, so they're extremely efficient. But uh, the thermal mass one runs the exhaust because it runs through on a on a vertical. Then runs up a tube, and that tube is insulated, uh, and then placed uh, a large steel barrel is normally placed over the top of that tube uh, and um, uh, the air runs up through the, the, the gas, the heat runs up the centre of the tube, hits the top of the barrel, then runs down the sides of the barrel in between the insulation and the exterior of the barrel, runs into a chamber and this chamber can be run to anywhere. You can heat your water with it, um, you can also run this chamber through a insulated thermal mass seat so you run tubes and then you use thermal insulation and then you cover with cob and then you can decorate with stone or wood or whatever you like. The same as an earthship, you can facial it whatever you like. You can be as artistic <coughs> or as basic as you like. But these things, once you heat them up and you put them in the house, will uh, maintain warmth for up to 30 hours on average. Well, 30 hours on average. Uh, and um, there's an absolute fantastic uh, knowledge in 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 this sort of technology, which is actually quite old technology. The Romans used to use it for having um, their underfloor heating and heating their Roman baths, uh, and, uh, and so they 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 took it from somebody else. It was all Roman technology. What did the Romans ever do for us? Well, not a lot actually, but they took their uh, they took their technology. Uh, um, uh, from various tribes and combined it. So, um, you know, it has been used as a, there's lots of historical precedent. Uh, at the moment, there's a, a lot of people developing rocket stoves in Africa because it's helping people um, uh, conserve energy uh, and to use coppice plants rather than to go and cut down forests uh, and to have large wasteful fires, uh, which obviously destroy the forest environment and therefore destroy all human environments. So then, um, uh, rocket stoves uh, are a fantastic uh, um, technology. You can build them from waste materials. The only thing that's actually quite hard to get at the moment are the heat bricks, which you do need to build, build in the initial area, um, the uh, channel with um, uh, uh, fire bricks. And the fire bricks are very, very expensive. You go to builder's merchants, you're talking uh, a fiver per brick probably before that uh, um, and uh, they're very expensive and you'll need quite a few of them so that can be the only cost so you want to be looking around for um, recycling centers and those sort of areas to try and find your uh, your heat bricks um, but you can build a system for next to nothing uh, and um, it's it's a it, it's a fantastic way I'm having one uh, I, I uh, I had a mate who's uh, who's wonderful at this. You can look him up on uh, Facebook. It's called Edge Cad uh, and uh, Vidris Machina. Uh, he's cool. Uh, he's labelled as, and he's a wonderful fabricator. He's been working in rocket stoves for quite a while, and he's worked with me to push the limits and develop. Hopefully. Uh, uh, well, I've actually seen it now on video. It's wonderful. It's all working, and I get it on Saturday. It's coming to me on Saturday. I'm going to be warm. I'm freezing. Uh, and uh, it's the first one, I think, in the country, uh, at least uh, here, uh, with a glass front. Uh, so you can see the flames. And it has a five-gallon water container connected to the back, uh, which is disconnectable. Uh, with a tap on, uh, so um, you get a wonderful heated water, and even the water acts differently. The molecules are different heated this way than heated in your electric kettle. So uh, it's uh, it's a beautifully beneficial system, and if you're very inventive, which I hope to be, uh, uh, is also I hope to uh, fabricate a copper still uh, or a still system or um, some type of uh, system to uh, clarify water off this as well. Uh, because we don't seem to be getting water through our taps. They keep telling us to pay a water bill, but actually it's uh, not water anymore. It's water plus many elements uh, and uh, mainly chlorine. And when they do wash with chlorine, uh, uh, 
uh, if you go and visit a vet, he knows when your local council is cleaning the drains with chlorine because uh, exotic pets die by the dozen. Uh, we are being toxicated in everything we do, and our houses actually are one of the most toxicated areas we have new carpets carpets particularly those sort of things are it, it, it's a super toxicity which we don't really look at uh, often uh, in fact the most toxic environment people ever get into is your car so the best advice of getting into a car is open the window before you get in uh, and leave it for a few minutes before you get in because those materials are the most toxic on the planet i don't care whether it's electric car petrol car diesel car truck, van, whatever. It's one of the most toxic environments on the planet. So uh, we've got to still learn to look after ourselves. Uh, uh, and um, uh, all these technologies uh, are hopefully giving people uh, eventually a level of independence because you can easily see how you can combine permaculture systems with earthship systems, uh, live in an environment where you've got permaculture forest growing inside and around your building and the wonderful option there is the airship with its different environment uh you can uh, develop a, a specific environment you can develop a more exotic to environment so michael reynolds is picking bananas out of his front room in, in february when it's minus 30 outside so you can you can really develop uh, uh, a lot of different uh, 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 combinations that give us independence, that give us our, our ability to um, move forward uh, and uh, um, to look at new options. People say, well, where's the land? Well, we have thousands and thousands of acres of land. Like I mentioned earlier, if you go up in a balloon and you look over the land, all you'll see is fields as far as the eye can see. And we are all stuffed into towns and villages and cities. Uh, and um, uh, and this is a problem from our agriculture. 10,000 years ago, we took a wrong turn. Uh, and um, it's uh, the problem with agriculture when you when you when they developed agriculture, they realized that they were uh, the culture was booming. The, the population was booming. So um, they needed more land for more agriculture. And then they realized that the land that they were using was getting degraded. So they had to look for solutions to put the nutrients back in the land. So with those two objectives, needing more land and needing more nutrients and needing more resources, uh, they needed to create an army to go and get more land so they could take land off other people. And there's no accident to why your army uniforms always have laurels and wheat on their collars, on their hats. Um, there's always a connection to uh, um, farming, uh, because that is what has built our uh, modern cultures. Uh, so we do have to turn this on its head. We have to turn it around. We have to recognize the connections between all of this. And um, it's beautiful as well these days, um, seeing uh, the distinction between law and legality, because it is giving opportunity for people to be able to um, uh, protect their land, protect themselves, and to go ahead uh, and not be part of the company policy of the private corporations, often called government by some people, uh, 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 of, of, our, of our Western world, uh, and develop these systems. And by the way, uh, um, I'm on Facebook as uh, Lee J. Lennon and Uncle, as uh, bracketed Uncle Grinder, and you're welcome uh, to join me. And if any projects are going on, I would pass any information and technology to anybody at any time. Uh, these technologies, I live to put these technologies out. Uh, I don't have a web page up at the moment. I've taken it down. I used to have a sculpting web page, uh, and that's my other area uh, is sculpting. I have an unusual technique. I work with ankle grinders alone, uh, and um, uh, hence uncle grinder. Uh, and um, I make a lot of my work uh, out of um, uh, plywood and stick it together, uh, engineered wood, uh, but rare wood sometimes, uh, beautiful woods. Uh, that are made into laminates and then connected together and I connect them all more together uh, uh, and then sculpt uh, but you'll see that on my Facebook page in my photo album along with the two part projects that I'm proposing at the moment uh, which I hope to be able to give the part to people create a beautiful environment uh, and pass uh, um, or 
or create a practical example within a town uh, so that people can study, observe, learn, enjoy, uh, create a park environment where people can relax, have great activity, have something there for every single level uh, of our culture uh, and uh, enjoy the colours and the smells and the environment uh, and uh, hopefully build airship structures within them for art uh, and cultural activity. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to promote everywhere at the moment. So please check my Facebook page out uh, and uh, spread uh, this word because I hope to do a general package very soon. Uh, and once again, I would offer all the things I've learned uh, and any skill I have uh, and would look forward to combining with more people on these subjects uh, and um, I'm promoting this everywhere uh, because at the moment we're just being destroyed by uh, over expensive uh, civil engineer projects uh, that are given are given a go ahead because they fit the agenda 21 or they fit they you see what i do just runs in the face of all of this uh, and and you know we, we we really do have to recognize what 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 our world is and we do have to recognize that they have no authority if we don't give consent uh, and we do have to turn this around as a group as a culture work together really push these uh, technologies because it gives us so much benefit in return uh, and um, so let's see where am I now uh, I've explained about uh, most of the sort of things that I do <laughs> so um, I think we're moving in if Paul's still around are you still there Paul you're always in the background buddy yeah yeah there, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here with you Badger I'm here with you great stuff man Great stuff. So I think we've got some callers, haven't we? We've we've got uh, a, a possibly uh, a couple of callers. Uh, well, we've got we've got a few of the crew on the line. Um, uh, 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 if they've got questions, then um, I think uh, you're hinting that this is the time. Uh, I have posted it um, to the chat. If Wonderful. anybody if anybody wants to ring in, um, put questions to you. Uh, well, to any of us really. Um, but great stuff, Badger. We've been sat here, my mate Neil's here. And we've just been sat here. Now, what they are asking for, I don't know if somebody's going to post it into chat. They're asking for your, uh, excuse me, your Facebook page in the um, um, the Dark City chat room. Yeah, okay, I'll, uh, I'll get the link. I'll yeah. open up the link, I'll post it for you. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. We have got a few people there. Prime to know, hey, thanks, man. I've noticed you posting there and uh, you know, it's good stuff in it. Anyway, uh, any questions, uh, Prajner or, or uh, Bob, uh, Jim? Have you got any questions for Bad Bad Badger on that amazing array of information? Um, I'm not sure whether I made sense. Sorry. I haven't got any questions. Yeah. He's answered everything I can think of. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Um, I'd I just know, like to say that it is really bit. refreshing to hear somebody look at all these technologies holistically because often place people will only look at one area and feel that that is the solution to everything and yeah thank you man i thoroughly enjoyed your talk no absolutely i mean we've got a problem with uh, looking for specialists in every area and it's a funny thing in permaculture your tree surge is no more important than a gardener and you're welcome to ask an allotment action, Badger. I think, I think you're down <laughs> well, well. It's a funny uh, thing with allotments in this country. It's a funny thing with allotments in this country. They, they really prevent permaculture. They don't like having fruit trees. They don't like having anything bigger than a, uh, bigger than a basil. Uh, and um, it's, um, it, it's really narrow-minded. They don't like you putting logs in. They don't like you doing this. i got friends who are trying to do this in allotment areas, and they're just coming up against because they're, they're often run by councils or community groups. Uh, who tend to be uh, from a very select area of our culture. It's funny as I go to these groups uh, and uh, they're claiming that they have authority. Uh, but even for multi-million pound projects, uh, I know in my own town, and when I came back, I, I was invited to be the flagship sculptor for a, a project in Cockington, which is a, a was a beautiful uh, traditional thatched roof area, very inspirational, very inspirational with forests and, all, uh, and everything connected. But they've uh, employed the same old civil engineers, given them, they spent millions of pounds 
um, our, our kids are not going to be able to pay for this. Uh, you know, our, their kids are not going to be able to pay for the, the mistakes we're making uh, and the bureaucratic process we go through and the health and safety and the means test uh, and uh, the, the risk assessment. Have you ever seen a risk assessment form? It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Uh, and um, uh, I, I studied architecture at college. I, I, I left it because I found it very corrupt and, and very alien. So even before I knew any of these subjects, I, I, I just couldn't relate to it. Uh, and um, uh, and so, you know, we we have these sort of projects, but I was trying to be brought in there. Um, but uh, they, would, they destroyed it. They destroyed it. They built these awful buildings with foundations where you could build a multi-story uh, building on. Uh, and they only built a single story with paper thin walls that if I use, because I do all my work with angle grinder, <laughs> it's quite noisy and extremely dusty. And I take all the covering off. I don't have protection. I protect myself. Uh, and um, uh, they, uh, I couldn't have worked in these units. And I was looking forward to them being built. And when they were built, I was saying, look, why didn't you get me to do it with an airship? I could have done it for uh, you know a tenth of the price. You'd have had much more value building. And did those civil engineers ever ask an artist, as it's built as an artist centre, or any art art people, what they would like as a workshop? Because they're just built as boxes. Uh, and the narrow mindedness that we've got in our in the development area uh, uh, of our councils is amazing. And I go to meetings sometimes when I got back to the country. Uh, which was about three years ago now. Uh, uh, I got back to the country and I've been struggling to get all this out since then. But uh, um, uh, it's been a struggle, I can tell you. But uh, um, in these uh, in these areas, you know, I mean, we've got to stop looking at these civil engineers to, to have our problems. But I go to these meetings and I challenge these civil engineers. I say, well, you know, you want a project, you want to spend 10 million quid on this 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 renovation or, or, or new idea, which is generally very limited. It's normally limited to a, a hotel, a restaurant or a bar uh, or a golf course or a waste ground. That's as far as they go. Uh, and um, uh, and these um, they're always trying to compromise and they're always trying to tick all the boxes for the European Union to get their grants or they're trying to tick all the boxes for this. And they're more interested in that. And they're more interested in appeasing anybody than actually making a, a, a decent workable system. And the other problem is that um, your the support, the go ahead, to go ahead for this, they send out forms to people who sign up to get the forms. Uh, and um, uh, and they end up uh, uh, doing their presentation. And, and I post questions because I know what they're about. I've worked in the industry. Uh, and I, I remember the, the first one. There was this developer going on about this one at the seafront uh, to destroy an area. Uh, and um, uh, and he said 60 percent of the town want this and 60 percent of the people want or, you know, X percent want this. And, that. and I, I let him go on for a little while and, and I, I posed the question. I said, OK, that's a percentage. So how many people have actually voted on this? Now, we're looking at a town. I've no idea how big my town is, whether it's. Uh, when I was young, it was 110,000. I, I, I believe it's almost triple that now. Uh, but um, uh, 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 he went all the way around the houses, didn't want to answer the question. And when he finally did, he had to admit that there was only 69 people had replied to the, his up, their applications going out and they were going to just carry on. I mean, people people don't have a connection to this. People people aren't, aren't wishing for all this to go ahead. This is going ahead without our consent. Uh, this is all going ahead, uh, spending all our money irresponsibly on projects that don't work ever, uh, don't even fulfill their initial remit most of the time, uh, and they're designed badly and built badly. So you end up with all sorts of problems. I mean, look at your local health centre or your that's developed by a council or, or, or community centre or whatever that's there, and you'll find it built extremely badly, often with a pool of water outside the front door because they didn't do the foundations on the front properly, whereas they did on the the building uh, overly uh, uh, and um, you know there's a big disconnect between people and their local community groups and their councils so you go to these community groups uh, and you'll only find a certain echelon of people uh, a, a certain certain group of people that ever go to these things and I encourage everybody to go to these things uh, don't think you don't have power uh, don't think you don't have a say don't think that you know I mean 
people that listen to this sort of radio and, and are involved in these sort of subjects are great thinkers. We've started to think. We started to throw our TVs out the window and we started to think. We have an opportunity to actually get our lives back and to stop this fraudulent uh, claim of authority uh, uh, that these people who are on 50 grand a year uh, on public money uh, wasting our money, getting bonuses and backhanders because it's all half above and half below the table, whether you're looking at right at the top or right at the bottom, it's always the same. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm sorry, these, uh, um, you know, development surveyors uh, or the, we've got here what they call the Torbay Development Agency, which is subcontracted by the council, which then subcontract another company called Tor2, which do deal with the rubbish and deal with, and they employ the parks people to deal with the parks. Uh, and it's just money for the boys. It's money for the boys. Uh, and we've got to kick them out or expose what they do and invite them in, which is the best, best option in my mind. Give them love give them an option give them give them give them such i'm trying to produce these projects uh i'm working editing the elegant one you'll, you'll see on my facebook the uh the slides i've finished the first project and i'm uh uh and the video is done and up on my facebook a little bit further down uh i'll repost them soon and um uh but um uh, I'm just editing the Elecom one, and I'm trying to offer these communities a different level. Now, even when you take it to the community, there's still a very small percentage that have their minds open enough to realize the true benefit of what's the, the possibilities and, and, and the knock-on effects of this type of system, if you can create it within, within a town. And I've deliberately aimed for the biggest uh, park, actually a park I grew up in uh, next to, uh, and um, uh, uh, and it's been destroyed. And they built, they 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 dug up the entire park uh, and and put in because Torquay's built. It's it's on it's on seven hills, and it's built on the rivers. The Victorians, in their wisdom, built the entire town on rivers. So uh, it was always flooded in town, uh, which is where the main river would have joined. Our main high street is based on town. Have a look on Google video, uh, Google Earth, uh, and um, and the, the the thing is that they've had to on both the parts that I'm putting proposals on, they've had to build these massive um, flood prevention uh, containers, if you like, they're like enormous concrete water tanks, and they've had to build them underneath. Now that would be fine, uh, in, you know, in a civil engineer's thought, uh, but the problem is that the water table actually, if they're not bolted to the um, the real hard uh, hardcore level uh, 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 of earth underneath the rock base, then the water level would actually shoot these out the ground. It would act like you know, like a uh, like a cistern in a toilet. It would it would it would blow it up. You know, you can't push a ball under water all the time. So they spent the most. I mean, millions millions building this now why why because if you look up one of the most important videos another one really important is brad lancaster permaculture uh, water systems again uh brad lancaster uh and brad lancaster shows the fallacy of these uh a civil this civil engineer thought which is just a, a science gone wild you know it's 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 got no reins We've got to rein these people in. Uh, and um, Brad Lancaster shows and explains. <laughs> he talks about a place in Arizona where there's uh, uh, there's four times the rainfall that each person needs falls on the town every year. Uh, but they've killed the river and they've killed the forest. So uh, and they built on it. Uh, and so now the environment has changed. The uh, land has changed. Uh, and um, they're still getting the same rainfall, but they're not able to use that water, and they don't. Nobody catches it in the modern world. Nobody catches water from the sky, which is much, 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 much higher quality, even with the crap that we put in the sky uh, and the chemtrails or whatever they are. Uh, um, it's still much better quality than you're getting out of your tap, but you have to pay an extortionate amount for. It. And I had the water board trying to tell me that they want to charge me an extra fifty quid. It's like this bedroom tax. They want to charge me an extra 50 quid for the water that runs off my building. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's as insane as you get, you know. So, you know, you get this, um, uh, they don't live in the real world. In fact, if you look in a law dictionary and you look up real, you'll actually find that real is, is foreign. Because... <laughs> You'll only find it in common law. You'll never find it in in in, in legality. Real doesn't exist because it can't exist in a fiction. Uh, and um, so you know, you end up with uh, um, uh, these guys spending all their money. They've got minimal um, authority to do it from the people, but they don't care. People have become complacent. They uh, also are kept busy. I mean, in our culture, you have to work your bloody ass off just to make ends meet. Uh, and the extra pressures that we've got now with this fraudulent, false austerity, which is only an excuse to change the rules and to change the culture and to change uh, the environment uh, uh, to make us more slavish uh, than we already are, um, uh, then, um, you know, we, we're just being we're just being ripped off left, right and centre. Uh, and, and, you know, you can't keep them off. Yeah, I, I know people that have joined the Uni, uh, Universal Community Trust, and they're, uh, uh, they're using various means, uh, often uh, because they want to abstain from um, supporting wars, not to pay tax. But basically, you shouldn't pay tax if you don't agree with what they're spending the money on. Uh, uh, you know, it, I mean, why should you pay tax? And what is 20% on everything? I mean, man, how much money do these guys need to push between each other? Uh, you know, I, I find I get people, you know, in, in casual comments complaining about their bank's charges. Well, why complain about your bank's charges when in the last um, uh, bank bonus, uh, they gave the equivalent of uh, £4,000 for every person in the country to the banks? Now, if they gave £4,000 for each person in the country, I think our economy would recover in an instant. And that was only the last bailout. So, you know, it's just, I know money isn't anything. I mean, I've encouraged people to watch the money fix. But, you know, I mean, really, guys, I mean, you know, this, this, you guys are open. And that's why, you know, I've got an opportunity to, 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 to get, you know, my passion <laughs> out here. Uh, and uh, um, it's obviously, I do it for my It is obviously a passion and it's, it is beautiful to hear somebody speak with such passion but talking of opportunity I do believe Prasner had a question um, for you as, as well are you there Prasner? Uh, if I had there, a question you know I think it's kind of long gone you know <laughs> I, I, no, I was only saying that I wanted to look into this dinosaur because, uh, because I've got a, um, another generator, a very simple to build generator that just involves a few magnets that you can hook on to something like that and it gets rather fun. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to have a look at that video. Well, the Dynosphere, I'll try and post it for you in a second. The Dynosphere in the chat box, uh, the Dynosphere is um, uh, the uh, a basic uh, system but uh, there is a problem with the Dynosphere because You've got, uh, it took him uh, 16 grand to develop the first one. Uh, uh, and um, obviously, as he develops more, and he mentions it in a, in a video I will post after this one. Uh, but um, you've got development costs. Uh, and I've got no money. I've been uh, bashed around and, and battered around uh, with the system since I got back to England. And uh, I ended up back here with the breakup of a marriage and uh, uh, on my ass, basically. Uh, and um, uh, this, you know, you realize the holes in the system. But, you know, you can develop these things uh, at a different scale. So I've just posted the first one on there. Uh, I'll have a look, see if I can find. Uh, that's the CGI uh, image. Well, um, that, but, uh, look, just looking at the shape of the rotor on that, you know, that looks to me like you could get one piece of pipe and just cut it at the right kind of angles and you'd end up with precisely the pieces you'd need to make that rotor. Well, I've got a wonderful old farming book and an old farming book. The old farmers used to develop these all the time. Uh, and, uh, um, oh, you'd be amazed. I mean, these guys didn't have a B&Q to go to, <laughs> you know. Uh, ah, I found the other one now. Uh, the, 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 the old farmers in, in traditionally, 
didn't have a, a B and Q and a builders merchants and anything. So they had to make their own tools. They had to make their own windmills. They had to make their own stuff. Uh, and uh, they were they had great ingenuity. Uh, and these days we're just limited. We live a life of limited responsibility for everything we do, and we're encouraged to. We're insured against any accident, so we don't really care if we have an accident. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we, we've got no, we don't live a responsible way of life. We can't in our culture. It's impossible. Uh, if you uh, tie yourself up into the system, you, uh, I mean, I'm going through this part with the public saying they're asking me to go through the, the jump through loops to, to, to do what, you know, to just to do what I do. Uh, you know, I've got to do a risk assessment and get public liability insurance, cover this, just to just to carve a tree stump. Uh, whereas really, I, I, I say on the end of my video for the for the first part uh, to one of the councillors of the town uh, who on video put his full commitment towards the project wonderfully. Um, I, I'm sort of breaking through a little. Um, but, um, you know, I've got to go through all of that. Whereas I told him, just get me an electric cable put a barrier two meters around it and uh and i'm off and don't even have to pay me you can pay me in carrots because i do high nutrition juicing with masticating juicing systems too i do uh, as a result of this you end up walking into health it's a funny thing when you start studying these subjects they're all connected there's a symbiosis between them and i've developed permafusion fusion as a personal thing and, uh, to identify that I want to come and, 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 and promote uh, permaculture, but I want to promote it in a combination with other factors. And I want to make it, you know, it comes from my personal angle. Uh, and, um, uh, and it, you know, it's something, I, you know, I, I thought, well, yeah, uh, it's, it's a fusion uh, of all these elements to put it together. But we can build these things of course we can build these things i mean the fabricator uh, uh, that i mentioned uh, from edgecad uh, on facebook uh, absolutely wonderful wonderful see what this guy's creating man it's oh, oh it's amazing he's amazing uh, ed if you're out there you 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 you're bloody amazing uh, and um, uh, and i'm coming across these wonderful people and i want to meet more people so Please contact me. Anybody, uh, contact me. Uh, um, uh, you know, and, and 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 we'll work together to change our world, and we'll do it practically, and we'll back it with law. But it's no good just writing letters, even though that's what we need, rather than protesting, because uh, pro is for it, and testing is just testing. Uh, and um, you're just saying to the company boss, uh, I don't like what you're doing, uh, but I'm in your company, so you go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, so we're actually every time you protest, you're actually supporting the, the, the problem, not not dismantling it. Whereas if all those people on the protest went home and wrote a letter withdrawing their consent, I think we'd have a big change tomorrow. So, you know, we have to look at things differently and we can create ourselves. We can fabricate ourselves. We can connect together. There's the TP village in, in Hereford uh, and, and they just got off their, 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 their butts and, and, and build a, a straw roundhouse, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and, and they, they, they work into new technologies. There's, um, you know, there, there are communities that you can't think that you're going to buy a piece of land. I mean, it does work. It can work. Uh, uh, and do it in the outskirts, in the middle of nowhere, and think that you're going to have a big effect on culture. You have to do it right bang smack in the middle. Uh, and like Mary Clear of Todd Morton, Todd Morden, uh, wonderful videos, Mary Clear from, from Todd Morden. If you look up, uh, not the TED version, but uh, what's it called? It's Peace, Love and something or other, you'll find it. Mary Clear. Um, she uh, just went out there and planted uh, and she planted outside the police station and she planted outside the she, she built boxes. She got friends to come with her and they built planting boxes and they didn't you know, know the techniques particularly or great techniques. They just went and planted and they planted food everywhere. Uh, and uh, it's incredible edibles. Uh, and if you uh, if you see her passionate, I'll see if I can find a, a, a connection to the video of hers. Um, if you see her passion, uh, uh, and she just went out and did it, uh, and it's a beautiful thing. And in the end, she's got the police uh, outside the police station helping her plant. 
and she's got, you know, and you changed the paradigm of your community directly. Uh, and that's what I hope all these technologies can do. And if I can spread that these the news <laughs> that we have these technologies available and they're not that expensive and they're not that impossible. And OK, if you want to get solar panels, you want to develop wind systems, you're going to have to spend a bit of money. If you want to get the windows for the front of the airship, that might that's going to cost you money, uh, uh, you know. Uh, they, but most of the rest can be done out of reclaimed materials. And if you look at the garbage warrior, you'll see how amazing that can be. I mean, that guy reminds me of a cross between me and my old man. But, um, uh, and, you know, you get uh, uh, you get this into the community. You get that frenzy. I'm trying to create a frenzy. I want a frenzy of people just being creative because we're all creative. We've just been encouraged and educated out of being creative. And, and I, I think it's, it's intrinsic. It's inside us. Uh, and, 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 you know, people say that people on the dole are lazy. Well, I, you know, I've been on the dole. I've, I've never been so busy in my life. Uh, uh, I'm not on the dole now, I'm self-employed. But, you know, when I was there, I was working my, my ass off. Uh, and uh, all the people I know on the dole actually have to be very inventive and very clever and very uh, ingenuitive to be able to survive and to be able to make ends meet and to make things work. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it's like, you know, we've we've got to we've got to have this frenzy. We've got to help each other, uh, uh, and if we can start to help each other and introduce new technologies that allow us to be creating abundance, not not using this stupid word sustainable. Uh, uh, there's three hundred meanings to that bloody word, uh, and uh, I hate the word. Absolutely hate it. Uh, but it's number one word to promote Agenda 21 and the UN agenda. So, uh, you know, uh, of which there is a, somewhere in America that's actually there is a uh, uh, I don't know whether it's a town or a county or or whatever that has actually um, rejected Agenda 21. One of the only ones in the in the, in the first world. Uh, I don't know why we call it the first world. Uh, um, uh, but. Um, uh, one of the only places that has rejected Agenda 21 and called it, what was their word? It was it was rather fantastic word, uh, insidious, I think, uh, or something along those lines. It, it was wonderful. I think it was. Yeah, uh, it's, it's insidious. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, uh, and it's giving rocks more rights than humans. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's, it's giving so many rules that you'll not be able to allow to be in the country. Uh, it's doing exactly the opposite. And when you look at this, in a, you can you can get the Agenda 21 book, by the way. You can order it. You can get it online. Uh, you can get the hard copy. Uh, they'll send you it. It's just quite a small book, uh, and it's dumped on every council table, and they don't even read it. Like, councillors never read the legislation. So they come in, and they, they, they have an idea of what they're talking about. But even the people putting on seminars, like, uh, uh, they, they, they never read legislation. They have no idea. They don't. They, they don't read it. So you've got a big advantage on them if you read the legislation. Uh, you're more educated than them instantly. Uh, but the Agenda 21 thing, uh, you know, I mean, we really have to wake up to this. Um, uh, and with the poor food we eat, we're not able to think right. With the poor water, we're not. We're not able to. We're, we're toxified. You know, toxicity levels in our body is extreme. We, we have acid levels in our body, which make us extremely ill. Uh, and, uh, you know, wake up in the morning, get your ginger and your lemon and some uh, coriander seeds and whatever, and, and some, some cinnamon fresh and whack it in a big jar and some, some not quite boiled water. Uh, and, um, uh, and straighten your body out in the morning. It'll, it'll, um, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll alkaline your body and you know cancer is impossible in an alkaline body um i study a lot of the gerson technique and the high nutrition through the masticate inducing as i mentioned earlier and you know we really have to learn about all this we have to learn about what the benefits are of distilled water we have to learn about all of this and we have to put this up uh and um I, i'm not banging videos up there at the moment which i often do uh, uh as i follow because i I've got a limit on what I can do on my computer while I'm talking on this. But, um, uh, you know, it's all out there. And you can check out my YouTube channel all the way through. There's a food and health section as well. Uh, and um, I encourage everybody in the world to spend £6.99 uh, with uh, the company called Juiceland. Or uh, you can get it on Amazon as well. But uh, it's called Fresh Fruit and Juices, £6.99. Uh, and it's a book by Dr. Norman Walker, who developed the Norwalk uh, juicing machine, uh, which has now been evolved 
into a twin gear master cat inducer uh, um, uh, in his new range. Uh, uh, but uh, that book is the best investment you'll ever make. It will tell you about every bit of food, how much distilled water you get out of each vegetable. It will tell you about the nutrients within them, what it does to your body, the combinations of those nutrients. And, and it's, a, it's, it's the best uh, uh, health manual I've, I've ever found and I've read a lot of this sort of stuff but it's something that everybody can have because it's a tiny book you can carry around with you all the time and you can just say oh I want to know about carrots so you read about carrots I want to know how to juice potatoes without having to cook them because cooked food is toxic guys uh, uh, human beings are not meant to have cooked food warm food warm soups that don't kill the enzymes uh, which are dead when you hit all of them at 120 degrees, but start dying at about 80, 90 degrees, uh, well, 75. Uh, uh, and, um, you know, you, you, you want live food. Uh, we, we, we go to a supermarket, we eat dead food. Uh, we eat dead food that's horse meat half the time, and in Romania or somewhere, I think they've just discovered the prisoners in the burgers when they died off. So it's a bit soil and green there. But um, I noticed an article on Facebook the other day. I don't know where it's true, I haven't checked it out. But um, certainly the horse meat is true, and the horse meat in Tesco's and their burgers or whatever is the same supplier who supplies Hungry Joe's in America. And, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, look at Food Inc. That's a wonderful, or uh, uh, The Future of Food. There are two videos that are, uh, are wonderfully educated, or uh, uh, The Antidote to America's Toxic life Lifestyle. Uh, these are eye-opening. There are wonderful, wonderful doctors coming out of the closet, changing their, their processes. We've got Dr. Dave, Gabriel Cousins. We've got uh, David Wolf, and, uh, uh, um, you know, so many wonderful. Blaylock, man, Russell Blaylock. Uh, you know, anybody on the vaccines wants to know about vaccines? Vaccines, I'm convinced, almost killed my son, uh, and who is the inspiration for all I do. Uh, he's nine. Uh, and um, not with me at the moment, I'm still in, in Europe, and uh, um, with his mother. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, when you look at these people, Blaylock, uh, if you look up uh, session 22 of the vaccines uh, seminar, I think it's called, oh, man, it's technical knowledge. It's for doctors. Uh, but you can take a copy, give it to your doctor, and I tell you, that doctor's going to, if he looks at it, He's going to wake up. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it's 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 difficult for doctors. Uh, uh, and, you know, we take advice of these doctors who have an average lifespan of 52 years. And we take med medical advice off them. Nutritionists are not allowed in the National Health Service, but dietitians are. And does anybody ever cure even their fat problem with diet? No. It's done with nutrition and it's done with the understanding of what nutrition actually combines in your body, how it works, uh, uh, you know, even on the twin gear masticate inducer. It's not just a case of banging it in. Uh, you know, you need it apples uh, um, mostly uh, as, a, as a foundation in there or carrot, apples, carrots, ginger and lemon are the ginger and lemon to balance the flavors uh, uh, and to take the strong flavors out of certain other um, because you want 60% green in there, ideally. Uh, but carrots uh, and apples also work to open uh, the peptides. Uh, and when you are juicing, it's good to chew on an apple at the same time. Uh, you know, slices of apple. Have a couple of slices of apple while you're having a juice because it releases this saliva in your body, which helps, again, the absorption rate into your body. And if you do these juices correctly, they don't even hit your stomach. They, 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 they absorb directly into your body. And the pinnacle of that is with uh, chlorophyll. Uh, and um, uh, chlorophyll is, um, uh, you will find in wild grass. And in wild grass, uh, yeah, I, I mean, just normal grass, grass everywhere. It's actually quite hard to find because we follow the Victorians and we cut grass all over the place. Oh, it's funny that I do have to mention about the Victorians and grass. In the old days, uh, uh, a long time ago, uh, um, people of, uh, of high class uh, and big estates went to go and visit the Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal used to get virgins going across the grass and cutting the grass uh, by hand. 
Okay, they didn't use animals or anything. They used to cut it by gra by hand, and they were so impressed at how beautiful the effect was because it was so unusual uh, that they wanted to bring that back to England. So, uh, um, but we had nobody who was willing to go out there, even even the serfs, and we're classed as serfs lawfully. Even the serfs didn't want to go out there uh, under pressure and cut the cut the grass. So we started getting animals, and then we got to do something with the animals because we found that certain animals will keep the glass shut. I mean, and then it's part of our agriculture. I mean, really, honestly, we, we, we've gone down so many routes backwards uh, uh, that I can't begin. <laughs> I can't begin. Uh, you know, well, I am beginning, I suppose, but, you know, I'll never end. I can talk for a year, guys. Sorry. Uh, but uh, chlorophyll, wonderful benefits. I'm going to post on the... Uh, on the page but it's it's normal grass the white the broad leaf if possible but just grass not grass that is seeded which is what we call wheat uh but normal grass and you know i've got a picture somewhere um and uh i don't know where i can find it to post it but there's a i've got a picture of um a cross cut of june grass and um the cross cut of june grass uh, you'll be able to see, it's really mad, you'll be able to see that it has, um, uh, okay, tomorrow I'll put it on my Facebook instead of my vegetables at the top, uh, uh, this one. It, it, it has little smiley faces in it. And they call this signatures. So you've got the ginkgo tree with a signature and, it, and walnuts, and they both have the sh same shape and division of your brain. And funny enough, they're brain food. Uh, anybody depressed, by the way, um, two handfuls of cashew nuts every day. Don't give a shit about the fattening. It's the type of oils you want and fat you want. We, we need fat. We need cholesterol. We're all backwards. We, we don't need too much fiber if you eat vegetables and you don't eat meat. You only need fiber at the extent that we have fiber, like your all brown and all that crap. We only need that if you're a big meat eater. Um, uh, and uh, you don't need it if you're a vegetable eater. You need much lower fiber, uh, and you don't need the type of proteins that we get in animal proteins are non-digestible in the human body. Uh, it's fine in a factory; it looks amazing. It's like a Popeye was created from uh, a mistake in an analysis uh, back in the 30s, and um, uh, it was literally a mistake. Uh, they got the decimal point in the wrong place, and spinach looked like it was a superfood compared to all the others because they got the decimal point in the wrong place. And of course, it's going to look like it's 10 times better than anything else. So they built the cartoon Popeye to try and encourage <laughs> kids to have spinach. Now, it's a wonderful thing. Spinach is one of the best foods in the world. In fact, it's great uh, for your stomach lining and, and, and for, for uh, curing your body. Superfoods don't have to be spirulina or goji berries or anything like that that are very hard to get and expensive in your health food shop. Superfood is your grass which is full of um, uh, chlorophyll and silica, which is great for your skin, your hair. It's essential for humans. And we've never looked at it before because we can't digest it. We need a cow to digest it. And a cow, whatever it, in, it, 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 it digests, you put nine parts in to get one part out of a cow. So it's the most inefficient system in the world for farming cows. It's daft. And I, I'm, I'm sick of this, this daftness. Um, I do do permaculture and pass permaculture to farmers who do do um, uh, cattle and, and still live off livestock. Uh, you know, I mean, it still is an education. It still helps the process. And in Farm of the Future, they've got a wonderful excerpt where um, they actually, the government uh, uh, supply um, uh, four varieties of grass. But you. Uh, you know, Badger, yes. will, will you, um, well, I'm going to ask you to come back again um, because we've, we've run out of time, Badger. Uh, I'd love to get <laughs> on to this, uh, this juice extraction you're talking about. Uh, I really would, man. I mean, this, obviously, you've got a lot more good, solid information to share with people. So we'd like to be here for people like yourself and anybody, anybody else who's out there listening to Dark City Radio. Thanks for listening tonight. Thanks to Pradesner. Uh, and Ty and Dawn, uh, Bob Earthwise, our new producer on the city. <laughs> Good to have you all with us. Uh, thank you very much to Dom earlier, guests, 
everybody involved tonight. Max, it's been a brilliant evening. I've really enjoyed myself. Thank you very much, and uh, tune in again. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take, I've got a bit of confused with uh, Balloonhead's playlist series coming on next, uh, so I may have to play an old one. We seem to have a, a mixture. It could have been something to do with my. I'm not sure. I seem to have lost part of his playlist. So what I will do is I will put because the um, the words. I'd like to say, I'd like to just, if I can, Paul. I'd like to just say thanks very much for everybody for um, uh, uh, bearing through my my monologue, and I hope I've made sense. And and uh, uh, and as I say, I'd like to encourage people to contact me if they can. I'll, I'll try my best. I can't answer everybody all the time. Obviously, I'm I'm doing the best I can. But um, uh, thank you for listening. And I'd like to thank uh, Peter Kaiser, spelt with a C, uh, the Wild Grass Messiah, for teaching me about chlorophyll. And thank you, Paul, for having me on. And thank you, guys, for 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 being with me. Uh, I would get, I'm sure I speak for all of us. It's been our pleasure. It really has. I, I'm going to play uh, Zach and and what army. Uh, it's, um, anyway, I'm going to stick this on. Brilliant show. Thanks again. No worries. Thank you. <laughs>